reading from Psalm 145 for the call to worship here. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. You guys stand and sing. So we're on the, the Gospel of Mark, have been for a little bit. We've made it through three whole chapters, and now we're on chapter four. And so I'll, I'll read this to you guys. And then, uh, let's, well, I might even break it up right away. But, start. And again, he began to teach beside the sea. And a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. Pause. One verse in. This is one of my just favorite, this is a tiny little detail here, but I really like that Jesus was like, there's a whole lot of people here and I can't can't see me very well. I'm going to hop on a boat and then like sit out in the water and just have like everybody on land. I thought about doing it when I worked at camp, I was a counselor out there, I was like, I wonder if we can do like a Bible study where everyone's in canoes. It would have been a mess. Kids would have been so distracted and like drifting away everywhere, but this one was just Jesus sitting in the boat, and then speaking to everyone. Anyway, I just like it. Wanted to point it out. I was rereading this. I was like, he's in a boat? He's in a boat for this part? All right. Verse 2. And he was teaching them many things in parables, and, his, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And you're like, well, that's a little bit of a confusing parable, but lucky for us, he explains it right afterwards. There's the Jesus explains his parable. Verse 10, and when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables. So that, and these verses are quoted from Isaiah right after Isaiah says, here I am, send me. They may indeed see, but not perceive. They may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on the rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a little while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. Let me pray. 
God, we thank you for all that you do. Teaching stories uh, from, from boats to help us get a better glimpse of what your kingdom looks like and how, and how you love us, God. Um, God, may your word be heard today. And like we sang, um, God, your word, no syllable is empty or void. It does what it's set out to do. So use your word, God. Uh, guide our hearts. Thank you. Amen. So I have two parts. Two parts. First part's a little longer, second part's shorter. It's okay. The soil. Soil's part one. And that's what you are, and that's what I am. We're the soil. Jesus is the sower. The seed is his word. That is soil, Jesus sower, seed, his word. Uh, we, got, we got road soil, the path. We got shallow, rocky soil. We have thorny soil, and we have good soil. Sorry if you sat on this side. <laughs> that means that you're the path soil. You should have been way over on the right side by Eddie, obviously, the, the good soil. Um, no, no, no. Uh, let, me be, let me be clear about the good soil. The hearing and receiving of the word and then producing fruit is what makes good soil good. By grace and grace alone. There's not something that, that the good soil does to be good soil. Reading through this, this parable, uh, three of the soils receive the word. Not just the good soil. Only the path soil is so hardened that, that right now it, it, won't, it won't hear the word. How I think of the path soil is, if you've ever been in a disagreement or an argument with somebody, I certainly have, um, I like being right, and if you're lying, lying out your clear logic on, on why your points are correct, and no matter what you say, and you go to Google, and you're like, it's right here, point it out to you, it's right, and they're like, nope, and there's nothing that you can say that, that they believe. At that point, they've just hardened themselves to you, and it's like, everything you say, not hearing it, not hearing it, not hearing it, not hearing it. Maybe some of you guys have had that as parents with your kids, where you're like, you need to do this thing, and maybe that's selective. That might be different. Yeah. But that's, that's how I think of the, the hardened soil. Here's the word. Because it's, it's not like it isn't being scattered there. It still is. But there's, there's not a hearing it. They refuse to hear. The rocky, shallow soil, shallow soil does hear the word and receive it, uh, but doesn't have the roots to live long enough to bear crop, to bear fruit. As I was doing research for the sermon, um, I learned that a lot of missionaries to, to India with the Hindus would come across this sort of this sort of soil, because they share the word, and in Hinduism, they have thousands of gods. And so, if you come to them and present, hey, here's this God, his name is Jesus, and he's willing to forgive your sins and give you eternal life, and they're like, awesome, yes, I would like that, that would be great, and like, add them to the list. And then when you continue teaching, and you're like, Jesus says he's the one and only God, Suddenly that, that joy that they had, just as it talks about the joy that sprang up, yeah, that, that, that falls away. And suddenly there's some tribulation on account of the word. I don't agree with that part. And that seed withers and dies. The next soil, the thorny soil, also hears the word, uh, but manages to want earthly riches more. Things in this life become more important to that soil. Their job, their money, their athleticism, their comfort, their status... It's really hard to run after both of those things and Christ. And good soil, like I said, is, is good because it continues to grow and bear fruit. But it's hard for us to see, it's hard for me to see, oftentimes which soil is which. Because three of the soils all grow something for a time. For a time. And all have seed falling on them. All have the word within hearing like you do here. Get to hear God's word. So what kind of soil are you? Jesus is the sower. The seed is his word. He sows the seed to all. Pharisee, tax collector, the jerk, the compassionate, the bad, good, rocky, roady, thorny, me, and you. The seed scattering seems intentional. The, the Bible uses the words that it falls. It falls on the path. falls by the thorns. falls on the good soil. 
So it seems unintentional that there would be seed in those places. But really the seed is being very intentionally sown everywhere. The seed is looking to grow crops. The sower is looking to grow crops anywhere that he can. And so he's not, he's not saying, good soil, here's yours, and then if some happens to fall over here, happens to fall over there, then, you know, maybe, maybe it'll happen. But no, there's an intentional seed being scattered everywhere. It's a very important thing. Jesus isn't accidentally spreading his word. He doesn't just love the crowd gathered around him in his boat, but he loves every single individual in that crowd. And oftentimes, there's, there's Pharisees in, in his crowd, and yet he's still scattering seed and giving them word. The same goes for us, though. He cares about each of us as individuals. He doesn't just love the people who show up here regularly or the ones who dress nicely or know his word really well. He doesn't just love the people who love him, but he came to die on a cross for everyone and all sins. He loves everyone and doesn't discriminate against anyone while sharing the word or his, or his sacrifice. Nothing but the blood. That's, that's for all. The Pharisees and Sadducees were often around when Jesus taught, yet he didn't refrain from scattering seed toward them. The very people who would try and, and lead people away from Jesus' teaching. Jesus was teaching one thing, they'd teach another thing. And would end up even, you know, driving Christ to the cross. Pharisees in charge of killing him. Still there, having seeds scattered over and over on them by Jesus. Soil can change, so Jesus scattered and remember, the, the goal of the sower, then, is to have the word heard, received, and be carried to fruition. Whether that is 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, that's, that's not the goal. One isn't more or less saved based on the fruit that they bear. One isn't more or less saved based on the fruit that they bear. If I bear 100-fold of my fruit, and you bear six, that maybe I should change that around. If you guys bear a hundred and I only bear six, that doesn't, that doesn't change whether or not that, that was good soil. And it's important to, to rem remember that. Is there's other parables that, that get into that same sort of idea as well. But if you live your whole life as a Christian, you know, you have 90 years of bearing fruit, and someone else, 10 days before they die, and just has tiny bits of fruit, both are still saved. So part two then, as the, as the sowers, or as, as the soil, um, and the good soil gets the role of, of sower as well. In the parable, Jesus is the sower, but as, as Christians in the good soil, we want to be like Christ. The word Christian means little Christ. So that's what, that's what we get to be, little Christs. And so we too then get to be sowers. We have ears. Let us hear what Jesus says to tell others about him. If Jesus didn't discriminate in the scattering of his word, we don't have any reason to either. <laughs> Try me. We can argue about that, and I'll try and be really right about it. If you want to say that there's a good reason to discriminate in who you're uh, telling Jesus about, who you're sharing his word with. There was a period of time I lived out in, in Washington, not very long, like four months, maybe five months, somewhere around there. I uh, moved out there with a friend. The purpose was to go and help out with some, some youth groups out there, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, but while I was out there, no one was like, paying me to be involved in youth group. So I got a job at, uh, on an assembly line that was uh, Nintendo, which was pretty cool, um, if only just for the giant posters and that I could say like I worked at Nintendo. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was really interesting. The, the whole time I was there, it was, and I ended up, part of the reason I moved back from Washington is because after like everything was shipped out for Black Friday, then they were like, yeah, we're cutting like 
two of the lines, and I was like, oh, and they're like, that's already filled. So um, I had a yeah, shorter trip than I expected. But going there, and there's, there's a whole line. We, the, our whole job, we took boxes full of the Nintendo Wii. Somebody would take them out of the, like, pallets, take them out of the box, ship down the boxes. The whole, the whole line of, like, 35 people, this was the whole job. Open up the box, put in two, like, demo games, close it again, and then we'd repackage it and end up, you know, putting it back in boxes and ship it out again. That was the whole thing, like 35 people putting in two discs. I can't imagine that was like the best way to spend money, but somebody messed up in Japan and shipped them to us, and we had to, I don't know. There's 35 people doing that. Kind of a, a boring job for the most part. I, because I was younger than some, got to take boxes and stack them on pallets, and I made some real good-looking pallets. Um, I was, no, I was real proud of mine. Some other people had pallets, they're all like shaky and wavy, and the guys on the forklifts were like, yeah, these ones, easy to wrap, carry them around, it was good. I had some uh, experience with pallet wrapping with my dad, so um, credit goes to him. But there's all sorts of people on this line. There's uh, like three guys from Hawaii that were looking for like a fourth part for their quartet. Um, and I one time was working by them, and I like tried out and sang with them. Um, and there's a lot of uh, Japanese men and women there that were working on the line as well, as Washington has a pretty high population of people from Japan. And then there was this guy named John, and then there was me. And John was across from me one day, putting on the packaging, the box would come, put on the packaging labels, and then I would take the box and put it on the pallet. And John and I got to talking, and he was, I don't know, we were talking about well, he was doing that weekend, and he was at some sort of protest for something, and I, uh, I asked him a few questions. I asked him, you know, what he was doing there and, and why he was here protesting that, and um, he wanted the world to be better for future generations. And so I uh, asked him a couple more questions on that, you know, what, what his concern and, and where, you know, why, why he's concerned about that, um, because John said that he was atheist, and I, so I was just, you know, what, is it, what does it matter to you that the next generations are doing better if you're not existent anymore? And he's, you know, kind enough to just care about other people, um, even if he's not there anymore. But I hear just this, this, this one time, I'm not trying to, this isn't like a brag because Eric shares the gospel all the time with people, but this is one time where I, um, did. And I, and I talked with John, and I said, hey, let me tell you about uh, what I believe. And I did. I, I got to share the gospel with him here on this assembly line, waking up real early in the morning, packaging up pallets, and, and talking with John. And he didn't, he didn't want anything to do with it. Didn't want anything to do with, with Jesus. He was respectful of it, and I told him, hey, John, I'm not trying to bash on your, on your worldview, but uh, I care about you, and I, I believe that if you don't believe in Jesus, that when you die, then you're, you're hell-bound. And John, I'd rather, I'd rather see you in heaven. And he was like, thank you. I'm glad that you're, you're willing enough to, to tell me about that. Um, does show that you care, but that, you know, that's not for me. And John was probably like 60 years old or something like that, and he usually wasn't on the, the packaging side because it's more labor-intensive. So I had that conversation with John, uh, went back home that day, told my, my housemates about it. We prayed about John some, and I never got to work right next to him again, and it wasn't very long afterwards that I didn't have a job there at Nintendo anymore. So every once in a while I think about John, and I pray about him. I think he had a daughter. Um... But there's no good reason for me not to, to share God's word, to sow seeds there. We all know people who might be rocky or roady or thorny or, or good soil. Jesus didn't give specifications and say, when you sow the seed, you give 40% to the good, 30% to the thorny, 20% to the rocky, and only 10% to the, the path the road soil. 
it's easy, easier to talk about Jesus' things amongst people who follow Jesus. It's easier for me to come and, and uh, preach from the Bible to you guys who come to the church as opposed to a group of thorny soil or rocky or path soil. But Jesus, Jesus didn't only give his word to some groups of people. And in fact, the Pharisees were, would get upset about that sort of thing when they're, why is he spending time with the tax collectors and the sinners? Because he's sharing their life, his life with them too and scattering seed there. The funny thing is though, people, you and me, we don't deserve to have seed scattered to us. But people do need God's word. Me and you as well. And he loves us enough to, to share seed with us. It's because God's great love that he'd, he'd die on the cross, take our sins and rise again, giving us a chance at resurrection. And so then we can hear that. And then I'll, I'll still pose the same scenario. Then you know, what right do we have to try and not scatter seed to some? Paths, they can be tilled up. Thorns can be removed. Soil changes. So let's share God's word everywhere. Scatter seed. Take chances at conversations. Pray for people. Take the extra little bit of time for someone. Tell people about Jesus, no matter the soil they might be right now. Let me pray. And... Uh, band come back up again. God, we thank you for sharing your word. Not to some, but, but to all. We see in the, in the Gospels over and over again, God, where you went. You didn't spend all your time in the temple, but you were at the temple. You didn't spend all your time just with tax collectors and sinners, but you were there. You spent most of your time, God, in Israel, but you, you still found time for a Samaritan woman as well. God, you gave us an example in, in this sowing of your seed out of your great love to us, sharing it with all of us, God. We thank you for that. God, help us to be little Christs. Uh, draw us to yourself. God, if I'm the wrong soil, break me up. Make me the good soil, God. Help me to produce fruit for you, your kingdom. Jesus' name. Amen. Um, will you guys sing with us? Um, stand up and sing. Uh, this next song is called Rejoice, and it was introduced last week. And um, it just talks about how, um, it just talks about like praising God and through like all the times of through struggle and through good times and just how God is there for us even though we are going through bad times. He's there and he calls us to praise him. And yeah. He has walked this path before us. He is walking from here, be thinking a little bit about the people who are the different soil that you know. Maybe uh, be convicted a little bit about a lack of scattering seed. There's still forgiveness for that. And then maybe if, if you're hearing this and maybe understanding a little bit more and you, you want to know how to not be a, a thorny soil or rocky, shallow soil. You're looking to grow and, and bear fruit. Keep coming back. Good place to be with other, with other believers building you up. Come and talk with me. Come and talk with these guys.
find an elder. There's people in the church would be uh, willing to help build you up. But hear this, hear this blessing from Ephesians that I picked out because of its little bit of plant language in here. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God.